Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, I want to talk to you about five exclusive features that are only available in WaveLab when it's used as an ARA extension in Cubase. With the latest version of WaveLab, we were given the ability to open it as an ARA extension in Cubase, which means we can take much of the functionality that's available only in WaveLab and then expand what we can do in Cubase with it. And today, I want to pick out five of those options and explore them a little deeper. Right now, I'm looking at WaveLab opened as an ARA extension, which means if I'm in Cubase and I hit the space bar, I can see my project play, and I can see WaveLab playing the wave as well. Now, you can see in this display we're looking at that WaveLab has opened this as a stereo audio file. And you actually get some visuals to help you see this, because if I take my cursor and move it into the upper area, it actually shows L for the left side. And if I bring it down into the lower area, it shows an R for the right side. But one of the things we have now with WaveLab to increase what we can do in Cubase, if we come down into the lower left area, there's a button that allows us to enact the mid-side editing. If I click on that button, I now have the wave split into its mid-side components. And if I do the same thing I did a second ago with the cursor, if I bring it into the upper area, it has an M, which stands for the mid. And if I go down to the bottom, I get a little S, and it stands for the side. Initially, when I play it, it's going to sound the same as it did before. But now I can use any number of WaveLab's editing tools and actually work on the mid or the side signals separately. One of the first things I can do is just mute out one of these components. For example, let's say I want to take the mid right out of this sound. If I move into this upper area where it turns to M, cursor also only covers half of the wave. And if I double click on it, it now exclusively selects the mid signal. I can right click in this area. I can come down and choose the option to mute it. Or like it says here, I can simply hit the backspace key. Either one, I've now removed the mid signal right out of this audio. And if I play it now, I'm given an audition of just the side signal. This allows me to get in here and actually edit exclusively the side signal. I can raise or lower different gain levels if I want, or I can actually move some elements around to get creative. Once I've made some changes to the audio like this, if I go back up to my audio menu and then come back down to extensions, I now have an option that says make the extension permanent. I click on that. You can see that the actual original wave has now been altered, giving me a completely different sample to work with. All right, let's move on to our next exclusive feature. And that involves discussing what's known as the spectrogram view and the option for spectrum and spectral editing. WaveLab has its own set of features when it comes to spectral editing built right into the program. And when you have a view like this, where we're strictly looking at the waves, maybe I have a problem with one of my waves like this, where I have this kind of beep sound in the drum. Maybe a cell phone got recorded in the background, any number of things like that. If you come up to your top tabs, move along to the one that says spectrum and then hit that, you now bring up this spectral view, which allows you to see the waves, but now you're seeing it as frequency information. So where before, if you tried to do any work on the wave, the only thing you could do is affect the whole wave. I can actually see the frequency of the sound. In this case, that kind of beep sound. I have a range of tools that I can use to audition things. If I go over in the selection area, I can hit the speaker. And then if I hold my speaker anywhere and click, I can audition certain areas to zero in on what I'm looking for. Now, the topic of spectral editing is a pretty big topic, but let me show you some of the things you can do. Let's say I want to try to remove or diminish this beep sound out of my drums, but I don't want to remove the drum sound. One option I can enact, switching to this tool called the Rectangle Tool, I have a button in this Define and Copy area that says Source at Cursor. And for example, if I go to an area here where the frequencies are kind of what I'm looking for, that I would like to have over this beep area instead of this beep, I can place my cursor in that area, and then I can select this area that I can visually see that I know is the error I'm looking for. And it makes a selection over here in this empty area where I then have an option to say paste exactly. And every time I hit this, it's going to take some of the frequency from this area that's defined at the cursor and overwrite this beeped area. And I can hit this multiple times. And every time I do, it blurs out more of the beep sound and writes in more of the empty sound. If I want to work on a different section of it, I can hit escape and then redraw something with my rectangle to zero in more on what I'm trying to remove. I can again hit the paste exactly a few times. And then ultimately when I hit my sound now, I've greatly diminished that beep sound right out of it without affecting any of the overlapping drum sounds. You have other options where you can make selections and then go to the audio inpating button. This gives you the option to either expand what's in your selection and kind of spread it out into the other areas or draw from the surrounding areas, virtually smear those over your error sound. 
and you can press the auto impating to start the process. And again, you can either move or smear these frequencies in different ways until you get the result you're looking for. Along with your spectrogram view, which is down at the bottom, you're also given this option for a wavelet. If I click on this, this builds this wavelet display and you get an even finer view, which allows you to see these frequencies at another level. So all in all, with these various spectral editing options, you definitely get to expand some of your editing choices by having WaveLab as the ARA extension in Cubase. All right, so for our next exclusive feature, let's talk about error detection and correction. For this example, I have a sine wave. When I play this, there's a small clicker pop occurring in the audio. If we zoom in at the sample level, see that our sine wave has some kind of irregularity. Let's take it back into our WaveLab ARA and examine this. But with errors like this, the next thing I want to do is go up and find the correction tab. And this gives us a set of tools to identify errors like this and correct them. There's a button here that says detect all errors. I'm going to click that. WaveLab ran a test, but currently it found no error. I go up to this drop down for presets. I can open up this error detection configuration dialog. In this dialog, I can check to specifically find crackles or clicks or pops, or I can leave them all checked if I want. But there's a sensitivity area here. We can spin this all the way down to one, or we can spin it all the way up to 30. As I spin it up all the way to 30, an error actually shows up. And I could refine this if I wanted to. If I start spinning it backwards, I find that if I go below 26, the error disappears. This comes in handy if you have multiple errors. Sometimes you can filter out certain ones and leaving others visible. But I'm gonna leave this at the 27 mark. I'm gonna close this dialog out. And I see I have a choice here that says find the next error. If I click on this, WaveLab actually begins scanning through the file. And anything else that shows up as an error, you can quickly move through the file and find it. And you can go backwards or forwards. Landing on the particular error that I'm interested in, as I come over into the correction area, I have three options in this dropdown. I have one that says the smooth pencil line. I have a short resynthesis. And then I have one that says impainting. Let's run these real quick and see what happens. If I take the smooth pencil line and I say correct the error, WaveLab draws a nice smooth curve, correcting the sharp angles, connects the samples with an easy flow to it. Up in the upper right corner, we have the undo and redo buttons. So I'm going to undo that process. Let's switch this to the short resynthesis. Then I'm going to hit correct the error. And again, we get a smooth line and a simple correction. Let's undo this. And finally, let's do the impainting option. I'm going to hit correct the error. That one takes a little bit longer to process and then ultimately corrects everything. Let's hit the arrow that says find the next error. It drops to the right side of the channel. Let's correct the error. And now we have a smooth connection between everything. Sometimes you have to experiment to get the result you want. But there's quite a range of tools and options to explore here. Now, next up, let's talk about advanced audio analysis. And what we mean by that is now you can explore many of the subtleties inside the audio files themselves with a new set of visual analysis tools. For example, if I take this audio file, talk, talk. which is opened in WaveLab's ARA, but I come down to the bottom left area, I have a tab that says waveform. If I move on over, I now have a tab that says rainbow. I click on that. I get this multicolored display. Now it gives me some clue as to the frequency content within the audio. And it also helps me identify potential problems or areas I may need to address. One of the ways to take advantage of the rainbow display is to move over to the gear that says edit settings and open that up. And we see here that we can actually customize the display depending on what frequencies we want to see and the colors that we want to relate to those. But we're also given a good selection of presets from this dropdown, move down to the factory presets. For example, there's things down here that say target 2K and 8K. And now we can see visually these various frequencies. Or if we go to target 8K, you can see these frequencies. But because this is specifically a vocal sample, we also have a preset here that accents the sibilance frequencies. We have one for low and high. Let's hit the sibilance high. And now we can see at the beginning of each one of these waves that may have a potential stronger sibilance. We also have a more intense color. This would allow us to zero in on those particular areas and make some changes if we felt like we needed to. We go back up to our tabs. We have an analyze tab. We click on that. We have a button here that says global analysis. If I click on this, I can simply just run the analyze button and I quickly get details from this particular tab on the digital peaks, the true peak information, even what the levels are at the cursor. Moving through this, I have tabs specifically for the loudness, DC offset, and if there's potential errors to be identified. If I close this and go over to visual analysis and hit this button, we see that we can now create loudness profiles. Again, down in the lower left, I have a button to say analyze. If I click that, I get colored representations. In this case, reflecting the things I've chosen to show up on the display. 
For example, up here it says integrated loudness, and that's checked. And next to it, it has a blue color. And the drop-down list is choosing to take an average reading. So when I look down here on my waveform, this blue line is now giving me a visual of the integrated loudness. And if I actually hover over the blue line at any point, my cursor turns into a question mark, and I can actually see a reading, in this case, of negative 19 in LUFS. One nice thing about this display is once you've done an analysis, you can make changes and then see those changes immediately. For example, I have the blue line for the integrated loudness. If I come up and uncheck that, I can remove that from view. Or I can come up to the short-term loudness, click that, and then remove that from the view. And then we can move over to the tab that says Spectral Profile and run another analysis. And now we can get specifics on each little section of the audio. Anytime we want to remove any of these results, there's a tiny little trash can. I can click on that, and then it resets everything back. And then our last exclusive feature, let's talk about the options for loudness processing and normalization. One example being when you've got your song finished and you want to hear it at some of the potentially different mastered levels. For example, my mix song here. In my WaveLab ARA, I can now go up to the Process tab. I have a button here dedicated to loudness. So if I click on this, I get this loudness normalizer dialog. And of course, you can dial in and change all these different numbers. But one of the first things you'll want to do is go down to this preset list. And you're already given a long list of factory presets from all the different streaming services. We look here, we have Amazon and Apple, Spotify, YouTube, one for Netflix. Let me choose the Spotify option. If we look up here, we have a target loudness of negative 14 and a bunch of various other things that have been dialed in here for compression level and the peak level. Let's hit apply on this. It does a number of passes, and then just like that, our song has been brought up to that level. And this allows us to preview it now, look for potential problems or how the balance is. Maybe we want to hear this just at a basic broadcast level. Click on the one that says broadcast recommendations. I now have a loudness of negative 23. I hit apply. Now I can hear things at that level. So when you want a quick audition and see your songs at different levels as they relate to the streaming services or what they may be once you finally finish your mastering, and quickly preview through all these different options and examine these different choices that were made on these settings. A great set of features when you want to hear your song in a more finished format. And that does it for our five exclusive features. And the list goes on and on when you're working with WaveLab ARA. And of course, WaveLab in general is just a feature-packed program. And if you don't have it, be aware you can download a 60-day free trial from the Steinberg site, which allows you to get full access to the program and then become familiar with it so you can see all of its different benefits in action. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video on our five exclusive features in WaveLab when you're using it as an ARA extension in Cubase. It definitely puts a whole other set of features at your fingertips. Be sure to leave comments below this video on anything that you're interested in and would like to know more information on. Be sure to visit the digitalaudiomanual.com where you can find all kinds of extra in-depth tutorials on Cubase and WaveLab. It's just great to have you guys here and I'll see you next time.